should not watch Piramli movies as only a source of entertainment. Rather, we should consider it as a source by which we could find out more about the social conditions of the Malays, especially in the 1950s and 60s. And one of the most astonishing features of his film is that he would try as much as possible to portray the social life of the Malays as it is. Of course, you have all these fictionalized characters such as um, the Bujang Lapo, Blabu Labi, and so forth and so forth. But at the end of the day, the crux of the messages that he was trying to portray in, in, in those films were that the Malays were undergoing intensive challenges, especially in the 50s and 60s. It was the post-war years. There were a lot of changes that were taking place. And this was what life was all about. There was a lot of social suffering. Prostitution was rampant. And he would put it in his film, but address it obliquely. Rather than to portray a prostitute as a prostitute, he would have girls working as cabaret girls, they call it in those days. Uh, there were problems of poverty, as seen from the Bujang Lapuk house. They used to live in long houses. There was no sense of privacy. They didn't even have doors. Their, house, their, their rooms would be covered by just a piece of cloth. There were marital problems. If you think that you have marital problems today, there were marital problems in those days. But I think the, the, the essential thing about his movies or films that he has highlighted to us is that times may be hard for Malays then, but they were happy. And this is the interesting thing about Pirandi films, that at the end of each and every film, you will get some very powerful reminders about why life need to be ordered in the ways that it should be. But he will leave you with a sense that there is hope. And I think it is really because he felt that the Malays were able and is able today to achieve great heights amidst of all the problems that were, they were facing him. So there was a lot of hope as well as a lot of um, criticisms in this film. Sabar Tina, sabar. Kita orang Islam. Menurut undang-undang Islam boleh kahwin sampai empat sayang. Ini baru dua. Lagi dua nampak akan datang Tina. Entah next chin ka, entah coming soon ka. Tina, Tina. Oh, pasal nak berbini ikut undang-undang Islam ya? Pasal sembahyang, puasa, kenapa tak mau ikut undang-undang Islam? Badan lah dengan muka dia tu. Dia dah mampus. Ada hati nak berbini dua konon. Eh, lebih baik kita pergi Sabah. Hmm? Sabah nak buat apa? Kalau kita tak pergi Sabah, dia orang kalau bergaduh sampai pagi, kita akan terlajar. Eh, hey, sedara. Sedara ni berbini dua memang pandai. Tapi undang-undang bodoh. Kalau nak berbini dua, tu gila-gila lah. Satu hari sini, satu hari sana. Baru adil. Selamat malam. Hmm, ya tak ya. Betul juga cakap dia tu. Ah, sekarang kita berdamai lah ya. Tapi mah, bila malam, abang balik rumah Tina ya. Semalam abang balik sini ya. Mana-mana sajalah bang. Aduh, baik sungguh hati adik abang. La 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 la. Hah? Bila aku berbini? Alamak salah bilik dah. La 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 ni la 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 ni la 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 And this is unique to him. I mean, if you compare his films with what we have today, when you see films about social problems in the Malay community that you see in whatever channel there is, I shouldn't mention that. It's always negative, right? Mak pukul anak, uh, adik lari, makan drug, and so forth and so forth. But nothing that leaves us with a sense of looking into the future. But Pirandi had that. Why? Because he was born in Penang. He saw the problems of his time. He's a self-made actor, director, producer, singer, you name it, right? And he felt that if I could do this, and if I could achieve great heights for myself, why can't the Malays do so? Interestingly. So, yeah, that's one powerful thing about it. And one of those things that somehow Malays did not register is the fact that his films, the more successful ones, 
were financed by Chinese, right? It belonged to the Shaw Brothers company, and he had no problems with that. In none of his films can you find everyone in the film being Malay. If you watch any Malaysian movie today or any Singaporean movie today, everybody in the film is a Malay person, which is amazing. How can you have a film in Singapore and everyone is a Malay? It's impossible. But if you look at Alibaba Bujang Lapo, Ayah Cik Siti, Perempuan Banyak Mula, if you, the Chinese guy, if you look at um, Madu Tiga, there was this Chinese guy who fell off the tree. If you look at uh, Bujang Lapo, Seniman Bujang Lapo, Indian guy, Ayama, uh, fighting outside the longhouse, he wanted to show that we are, we are part and parcel of a Lande community and we need to register that there is a need to have a working relationship with practically everyone. Ini gaduh-gaduh sekarang sudah mau pagi tau. Jangan bising lah pergi tidur. Ini perempuan banyak pun tu. Sama dia saya cakap, sama saya ada banyak marah. Ini fikir tengok. Kita punya anak ada berak. Saya sama dia cakap, itu saya anggap buang. Dia tak mau. Saya sendiri anggap buang terlapas. Sayang punya besar. Kamu lihat, itu anak. Saya ada tendang, saya punya muka ada kena. Itu pasal saya banyak marah sama dia. Itu pasal saya go. Ada buat. Suai aja ada buat. Kadang. Ha, ha. Cek. Tai punya pasal pun mau gaduh ke? Ini cuci sudah hilang lah. Pergi tidur ya. Dia banyak dikilin, Cek. Dia punya kepala batu besar ada dulu. Cek, tak boleh dengar saya cakap, Cek. Ha. Ayo, ayo. Ayo tahu sekarang sudah pukul empat tau. Kalau ini macam bising, semua orang tak boleh tidur tau. Pergi tidur lah. Ah, tak ada yang cek sulit. Nama orang dia boleh buat parting kan, Badi. Jadi, jadi badi. Wah, wah. Ali, jadi tengok berapa keras, berapa besar batu ada kepala. Hah, kamu dengar. Aci, ini ayah sudah baik. Aci lagi mau gaduh ke? Ada baik lah ini macam. Tapi tidur. Nalain dia sambil lah, bawa baju. Bama, ya ma, ya bama. Asyril, ya ma, ya bama. Aje, ya bama, ya bama, ya, ya ma. Hmm. Ah, oh, boy. And I mean, I, I spoke to some of his extras, and they were saying that, I mean, he has working knowledge of Chinese, at least he could understand. He had very close relationships with um, Chinese producers. In fact, he learned a lot from Bollywood in order to structure many of his films. He was looking at Hollywood, he was learning from Chinese uh, film production, and then he melt all of this together to make what Malay film is in his time, or was in his time. And that's why I, I always think that it is so hard to recover the legacy of P. Ramli because we somehow find it hard to make Malay films that has a cosmopolitan value to it. We find it hard because we ourselves do not manifest what he is. Someone who's able to slide in between ethnicities. He was an Achenis, but he saw himself very much as part of the Malay culture, but could put in Indian uh, influences into his movies, having Chinese acting in his movies, Sikh person who gives good advice to the Chinese in Sineman Mujalapo, Mr. Singh, who tells the two guys that they need to behave more Malay, will you have that in, in Malay movies now? No way. I mean, sing in a Malay movie. I mean, that guy who's, who's acting as a Sikh, 
actually he's not saying himself. He's, he's an Indian Muslim guy. So all of these things, the legacy cannot be revived until Malays learn to be someone who's accepting of other communities in their lives at least. The one I enjoyed most really, and that's why I wrote that paper, is Sinema Mujang Lapo. Uh, because he, one of the powerful messages that he tried to invite or he tried to pass across to the audiences uh, very subtly is the fact that someone who's downtrodden can someday be a film star. It is actually reflective of his own life. He's trying to say that he once declared that he wants to be a film star and his friends were telling him a Malay boy from Penang who's of Achinese background wants to be a, a film star. You will not become a film star and eventually became a film star. So he's trying to say that in whatever social position you are in, in whatever state that you are in, if you have a dream and you work hard towards that dream and you are able to surmount whatever challenges that come in front of you and to forge alliances with the people around you, you will be somebody. And I think that is the most powerful message that he has put across, that he became somebody uh, of course, he died at a very young age, but he achieved something that no person who came from his social background could have ever achieved in a single lifetime. He died at 43 years old to become one of the most fondly remembered director, producer, actor, singer in a Malay world ever. Amazing.